Morning, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over five farms you should probably be doing before Shadowlands. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so today we're going to be going over five farms that you should probably be doing before Shadowlands. This could be i.e. relic stuff, stockpiling and things that I think are going to be actually going up in price and is something you should probably farm up now in order to hold on to for later. No doubt some of these things will actually go up in price because they generally do when it comes to like materials and just farms in general. So that being the case, I've comprised it into a list for this video. Now that being said, let's get on to number one. Now coming in at number one, we have the Rugged Leather Farm. Now Rugged Leather is one of those materials that you can pretty much farm in most classic, in most vanilla zones well, high level vanilla zones. Uh, but the actual best farm that I find, for instance, is actually Sunken Temple. Now, why is this? Now, Sunken Temple has an array of different types of things that you can be farming in there for. And it's predominantly a transmog farming location, but due to the fact that there's a load of green dragonfly dragons just in the zone, it's actually a really good farming location for low time investments for high return materials. This is why I actually love this farm and it's because you can only spend about 20 minutes before you actually reach lockout and this is when you're actually running into the instance, gathering up all of the dragons, burning them down and skinning them for rugged leather. Now you do get an array of different types of things such as worn dragon scales, green dragon scales as well, which actually do which actually do price for a pretty penny. Now, aside from that, I do use this to actually stockpile up on rugged leather, and predominantly this is going to be a material used for some of the vanilla crafting relics when it comes to wood leather working. So I would highly actually recommend, judging by what's actually going to be going about in Shadowlands, actually farming up a sizable amount of, of rugged leather. So I've actually combined, I've actually picked this farm due to the fact that you have a chance of getting some high-end transmog when you're actually doing this. You also get an array of different materials such as the worn and green dragon scales. And also you have the chance of and also you have the ability to get a hold of a load of rugged leather while you're doing it. Uh, aside from all the other farms where you don't get that many items, you with this one you can then put in like 20 minutes instead of doing an hour's worth of farming and still get semi, semi the same amount of um, leather as you would like on an open world farm. You obviously with an open world farm you could get a little bit more but I'm thinking more along the lines of time and do you really want to be farming for an hour when you could just do a 20 minute farm and get like 10-15% less uh, rugged leather as opposed to an hour's farm. It's just a case of how much time do you want to actually invest. So I've chosen um, so I have chosen this farm mainly due to the fact that it's easy to do, takes very little time to, to actually do it and you can get a wide variety of different types of materials and items in which to sell on the auction house. Other than that, let's get into number two. Now coming in at number two is the Thorium Ore Farm. Now this one is something I've actually covered quite a lot in the past and will do probably into the foreseeable future. Now this is because the Thorium Ore Farm is a great farming location within Silithus where all you have to do is farm around the actual outskirts of this actual zone. Now this is primarily one of my favorite zones due to the fact that it's a very easy route to follow. You really can't mess up on it. It's pretty much a square with a couple of chamfers on the sides when it actually comes towards the route and what you can actually do with that is you can actually get a wide variety of different types of materials i.e. there's only two of these that are actually of worth like proper of worth. The rest of the stuff are subsidiary little things that you can actually sell on the auction house like the other gems and that but really you're mainly going here for two items and mining in here you'll be getting arcane crystals which are used to make arcanite bars and also thorium ore. Now the thorium ore is going to be used for the relics of the past so it's a very good idea to actually stockpile all of this and alongside that with the arcane crystals you can also use that to make the, your arcanite bars in which to actually craft the epic versions of items. Now this is something I'm actually playing around with and actually making up a crafting list for is the crafted items for vanilla and BC when it comes to scaling with the relics. So not only am I stocking up on the actual relic materials, I'm actually stockpiling up on all of the other materials in order to make those crafts. So then all I have to do is literally just craft it. 
So say I wanted to scale the sulfuron hammer for instance, I can because I'll have all of the mats with the Arcanite bars and all that jazz. So that's something that I've actually been paying in mind when it actually comes to different types of farms and this is why I've chosen the Thor more one because it's used in blacksmithing to make the relics of the past and not only that you can actually get a load of the other materials in which you're gonna need in order to do those crafts so you might as well do something that gets the best of both worlds. So that's why I've actually chosen the Silithus farm at number two. Now coming in at number three we we have the heavy Borean leather farm. Now this one is actually mainly a Borean leather farm, not the heavy Borean leather farm, because the because Borean leather is actually farmed up in the Oculus, and I prefer the Oculus due to the fact almost the same as the Sunken Temple. You can use this as a Wrath of the Lich King transmog farm. You can also get a wide variety of different types of materials when you're actually skinning in there. And all you really do is gather up the mobs at the beginning of the instance up until the first little portal over to the next zone. And what you can actually do there is gather up all the mobs, burn them down, and you can get icy dragon scales, transmog, and also the Borean leather in which you need. You do also have a chance of getting a hold of arctic fur as well, which is used for some major crafts when it comes towards Shadowlands. Now, what you can do then, if you have a leather worker, is craft the Borean leather into heavy Borean leather. Simple enough. All you have to do there is just gather up a load of boring leather, turn it into heavy boring leather, and hold on to it for your relics of the past. You can also use these materials that you're actually gathering, so such as like the Arctic fur, the heavy Borean leather, Borean leather, and also, also the icy dragon scales in order to use that for your leather working in order to craft the relics of the past. Hence why I've actually gone with this one because some of these because some of these crafted items when it comes towards Shadowlands actually are looking quite promising when it comes to the scalability of different types of items and I'm actually going to be putting in quite a hefty amount of time in order to stockpile all this stuff up due to the fact that it's just seeming to be quite good at the moment and I'm predominantly going to be enjoying doing this farm as well because it's a very low maintenance farm it takes about 20 minutes roughly the same amount of time as the Sunken Temple and you can get a hell of a lot of materials as you would if you were going to be doing an open world farm. So I can spend less time and get near on the same amount of materials as I would open world farming for an hour. So I'd rather do 20 minutes and get uh, the same uh, same principle as the Sunken Temple. So other than that, let's move on to number four, which is Fell Iron Ore. Now, Fell Iron Ore is something that I do enjoy very much, and I do very much enjoy doing that farm. That is due to the fact that it has a wide variety of different nodes that you can actually farm up, and there is two specific zones in which you can actually farm this up pretty well. And that is Hellfire Peninsula for just Fell Iron Ore, you could do that if you just wanted to go and farm the relics of the past stuff. If you want to get the Thor, if you just want to get Fell Iron Ore and not much else, then go Hellfire Peninsula. If you wanted to get a wide variety of different items, such as if you were going to make, get your relics of the past and do some crafting, then you're probably going to want to do Terracar Forest. This is because there is Corium Ore drops or deposits. You can also get a load of adamantite ore and also fell iron ore in order to get all of those ores from BC in order to craft for your blacksmithing and then be able to make a lot of gold with that. That is something that I am looking into as well when it comes to crafted BC items and looking at most of these stuff, some of the rare crafts that I actually do have on my blacksmith is actually looking quite promising in the grand scheme of things, hence why I'm actually going to be going along with that when it comes to fell iron ore. So predominantly I will be farming in the Terracar Forest, but if you just want the fell iron ore for the relics of the past, go Hellfire Peninsula. Go Hellfire Peninsula because you'll get more fell iron ore for your hour. And last on our list for this actual video, and that is Heavy Savage Leather. Now, much like the Heavy Borean Leather, you'll be wanting to have a leather worker with this. But predominantly, when you actually wanted to farm this up for Savage Leather, the best place that I like to farm, and this is not the Baby Crocs farm, this is the Firelands farm. Now, I like to run into Firelands and gather up all of the mobs, burn them down, and skin them. 
that is predominantly what I prefer to do and that is because I get a wide variety of different types of transmogs in which to sell on the auction house. I, if I have the potion of treasure finding I also have a chance of getting loads of different materials from those tiny treasure chests and using a skinner I can also get a load of savage leather in which I can use that in order to use my leather worker to make heavy savage leather in which I can then use that for the relics of the past and then all of the other materials that I get along with it I can use that for scaling and crafting all a manner of different types of items from cataclysm so that is what I'm doing with that farm as well it's pretty much the same as the boring leather one and I've chosen an instance farm once again because it takes not a lot of time in order to actually farm it probably takes me about like 35 minutes on average give or take to actually do a full clear and reset and get locked out when it comes to my characters because I go for the specific mobs that you can actually skin um, you can also do the entire instance of everything if you really wanted to just make sure not to kill the bosses otherwise you will get locked to this for the week so other than that what do I think of this farm it's absolutely brilliant and predominantly you get a lot of materials from this due to the fact of the tight potion of treasure finding and it just pairs really really well overall other than that guys that is pretty much the five farms that i think that you should probably be doing before shallow lands when it comes to a material basis other than that guys have an awesome rest of the day and i shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow if you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better then why not check out the patreon members get additional info gold making resources and patreon specific content the link is located in the description down below Thank you and have an awesome day.